What's up, YouTube nights and long boxers? Welcome to Lords of the Long Box, episode 126. Happy new comic book day to you all. Welcome to a special edition. I hope you guys have been having a great, great day. I hope you're snatching up all them books and digging in them long boxes. We got a special episode today, but every episode is special, to be honest with you. But uh, I'm going to go right on down the line, introduce my cohorts first. I got my man, Dark Side Jedi. Say what's up to the good people. Yo, party people. It's a Wednesday. We're here. We're going to talk about some pretty interesting stuff. I'm pretty excited about tonight's show. That's right. I got my man, Lord Otto from the Grotto. Say what's up. What up to all my party people out there? It's your boy Otto coming to you live and direct from the Grotto. Can't wait to talk about some things tonight. Tim sent me on an assignment outside of Cybertron, so I went and did my homework. <laughs> so I got some information. I did some intel. You know, me and my boy uh, Soundwave came back with some good information to share with you guys tonight. Wah, 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 wah. That's <laughs> right. And last but not least, my man, Nemesis Prime, the variant horse. Say what's up. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Wednesday night, better than doing bags and boards. Live stream, Lords of the Long Box. That's right. Oh, wait, Bags and Boards, isn't that the name of another show? How dare you? No, I'm just kidding. Shout out to Comic Time 101. I believe their show was called Bags and Boards. No dig toward them because we all bagged and bored. Some get bored more than others. You know what I'm saying? But hey, <laughs> let's pay for our sponsorships. First of all, the show is sponsored by KRSComics.com. Go use the discount code of LOTLB to get 10% off any KRS Comics exclusives. They were just at MegaCon. They'll be going to San Diego Comic-Con soon. So they always got some cool stuff. They got a huge lineup. So make sure you see our friends at KRS Comics at San Diego Comic-Con. Say what's up. Tell them to keep digging in the long boxes and make Mark do something. He's lazy and he doesn't do anything at all. Also, I'd like to shout out our special sponsor, the Geeky Swag Shop.com. Use the discount code of L O T L B to get 15% off anything in the Geeky Swag Shop.com, including Lords of the Long Box t shirts that come in black, blue, and white. Yes. If you go to the Geeky Swag Shop.com and you go on the menu at the very top or on the side, just look for L O T L B and our t shirts are there. The discount code of L O T L B will get you 15% off a $25 ship shirt comes out to about $21 shipped for a shirt, and they go up to, I believe, 4XL. Yeah, that's for the big boys. That's right. That's for our big followers and fans. <laughs> Shout out to everybody in the live chat. There was a few fools in there. Tailgate, I love seeing the brothers tailgate and following each, subbing each other up that's and right. talking to good stuff. Uh, Bruce Zaya, Swaggernaut, Comic Fool, Unknown Comics Guy, Randy Sloan, Comic Art Talk, Comic Fool, 2814, Wobbles, our good friend. Comic Art Talk, that I already say that? Yeah, I did. So what? Uh, new Comics Mall, love that name. Snicket79, been a long time since you've seen Snicket. And our friend Tyler Rolnick, haven't seen him for a minute either. Connecticut Comics. Uh, let's go right to it. Um, as you saw last week's show, or not last week's show, but I had a special breaking news episode that came out Saturday. I've linked up with a new, uh, and it's the last time I'm going to call him this, is a insider scooper. All right. From now on, he is a he is a private member of the Lords of the Long Box, and his name will be he be referred to as the Black Knight. So Lord this is the Black, Black Knight, Knight report. This is the Lord Black Knight of the Lords of the Long Box. So we're just going to refer to him as the Black Knight or BK, because I don't want to sound pretentious by saying our insider scoop or our source. You know what I mean? Um, right. I've been talking to him a lot over the last few days. He is legit. I have seen his posts on social media where he predicted Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Shang Chi and some other news drops. He just to say he has a lot of connections. And, and he Marvel. wrote he wrote for some pretty big magazines in the nineties as and well. And I cannot disclose that information. You may put two and two together. Uh, he wrote for some fanzines back in the eighties and nineties, both comic books and movies. So he has a quite a good following. There's a knowledge. There's a knowledge. And he's doing something very soon uh, in a uh, new comic book. Um, so you know I can't disclose that yet. But um, you know. Like I said, some of this stuff happens immediately. It may happen a year from now. It may happen two years from now. So basically what, you know, the premise of this was, and also I have them on retainer and the face in my Facebook messenger. So if anybody has some questions in the live chat, ask away and I'll see if I can find out something. If it's privy, if he's privy to it, then I'll ask, but you know, don't go off or anything. We don't ask for Patreon. If you want to hook us up with a super chat, if you think the information is good or Hey, Come back six months from now if it comes true and leave a super chat. hundred bucks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, it's, it's, 
it, it, how it happened, I don't want to t- all the truth of it, but I keep on saying in episode after episode, there's a small, there's a group of people that buy books that move the market that we aren't aware of that have insider information. So I'm giving you a small bit of that information so you have a better chance of making a, a, a educated purchase based on information that only a small number or maybe a larger group than you think are privy to. Call it a secret cabal of collectors. I always speculated that somebody within somewhere knows something about some casting news and they tell their friends who are comic book collectors and they tell four or five others and all of a sudden a book gets hot, right? We've yeah. seen it happen. A, a book gets hot for no reason. Nowhere. Out of nowhere. And that was confirmed to me that sometimes that does happen. I'm saying not saying my guy does it, but he says that is how it happens. So if he allows me to tell you more about it, I will. But this is the way we're going to do this. I got some really good information. And I think, you know, we're going to talk about what we what my uh, the Black Knight has told us, what comic books that would be affected by it and probably what the prices are of them right now. So if you want to use the word speculate, go ahead. Sometimes it's used with a negative connotation. But now at least all you guys will have the information you want. You know, you say, hey, the Lord's told me this. Is it true? Let me look at the let me look at the market and let me see. Are, are prices jumping on this for no reason at all? I'm not. We are not market pushers, right? My hey, channel none of us 30- own a comic book store. I yeah. am not trying to stock up on a bunch of books and put out all of a sudden I'm going to sell a bunch of stuff on Instagram or eBay. You will not see that. What yeah. we're trying to do is give you information that we are privy to that could help in the long run in a collecting yeah. community. By the way, we're having an auction tomorrow. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> With everything we talked oh, about tonight. Ryan showing off the uh, Chromie May SM in the background. That's there. right. I didn't see I like that. that. I like that. When, uh... That might be up right. for sale pretty soon, I think. So stay tuned to Instagram, ladies and gentlemen. Wobble says it's Ken Lashley. No, to Ken Lashley's credit, we tried. Uh, and he would not give us insider information. He gave us a little bit about Avengers Infinity War, but he he was staying. Uh, so for those at the Mattel or whoever he was working on, listen, Ken Lashley didn't tell us anything, by the way. Uh, Ryan, let's kick it off with the news of the week. What do we got? Well, let's start it off. We got some Swamp Thing trailers, but then Marvel was like, hey, this might be a good time for some Man Thing on Hulu. You know what? This is a Black Knight exclusive. Um, the man thing is being fast tracked for development at Hulu. Uh, he will eventually join Ghost Rider, Hellstrom, and Satana as part of the Spirits of Vengeance. No, you're worried if he'll receive his own show, but he's gonna appear with the other horror characters. And if you remember, we just talked about this maybe last week, was it or two weeks ago? I have so much news now that drops. But we were talking about Ghost Rider and Hellstrom. Marvel who uh, Marvel is picking their adult theme stuff, uh, supernatural stuff, and gonna push it on Hulu since they are f- full partner ownership of Hulu. Remember, we've been we've been mm-hmm. talking about this, guys. Yes, we've been we talking have. about this, man. We just we use the information we had, we gathered and we put this now that We've gotten that information. We're getting more information. So Man Thing is coming. And it's kind of funny if you think about it. And Otto is going to touch on this in a second. That Swamp Thing and Man Thing have kind of had this symbiotic relationship ever since they came out in the comics. And now they're both going to appear on a streaming service uh, almost within a year of each other. Give us the breakdown on Man Thing. What is what is the Man Thing? Where did it come from? Who created this beast? Right. So this is this is a bit of a uh, funny story about Man Thing because you know you really never cared about Man Thing. Swamp Thing always took precedence over. I care it. about my Man Thing, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the, right. the giant I, size Man Thing. Come man on, let's thing, get it right. Let's get remember, it right. Remember, get your Man Thing checked too. You know, for all those guys out there. Oh. So anyway, a little public service announcement. So <laughs> Man Thing, this has been an ongoing issue. What what came first, the chicken or the egg? Did Man Thing come first or Swamp Thing came first? Um, Really, neither of them did, you guys. And I'll be completely honest with you. Neither of them did. They both were spawned from a character that came out in 1942. Pay attention, folks. Called the Heap. Okay? That's right. The Heap was from um, Airboy, Airboy Comic Comics. And the Heap was the same type of character as Man-Thing and Swamp-Thing. Just a little bit more dated. And the Heap actually ran until 1953. So it ran for many, many years. Roy Thomas was very enamored with this character, okay? So he went to Stan, Stan Lee, and talked about how he had this idea for for this character called Man-Thing. At the time, um, Conway and Len Wein were roommates, okay? Um, And both of them had ideas of certain characters. Roy loved both of them, all right? But Len, Len went to go work for DC at the time, and Conway stayed with Marvel. 
Then what happened was Roy loved the idea so much with what Conway had. He went to Stan and said, Stan, I got this idea for this guy called Man Thing. We really want it to work. It's a great idea. He's going to be a scientist and it has something to do with AIM is involved with it. And he gets converted and changed and he's got these powers. And Stan goes, stop, I don't like this. And Roy goes, why? What, what's the problem with this? And he goes, we already have a thing. We can't have the Man Thing and the thing. So Stan said, well, give it a chance. Let me try it. And, you know, Roy was always Stan's golden boy, right? We know that for many, many years. If you get a chance to talk to Roy Thomas, he's incredibly insightful. He's got so many great stories, and he's a fan, and he'll tell you about this. So the heap came first. Man Thing came out in May of 1971, and then it was the Swamp Thing that came out in June of 71. Yeah, so Man Thing actually published first. Yes, absolutely. Yep. And if you were going after it, the first book that you want to find Man Thing is Pay Savage Tales number Savage Tales number one, um, where it was a, that's the black and white magazine. You've seen it before. It's got Conan on a cover, and it was only eleven pages long in that story, so it really didn't last that long. Uh, Hard to find year. in high grade too, because yes. of the magazine format. So for those speculating out there, first of true appearance of Man Thing is, uh, and in the Bronze Age, a lot of Marvel titles had first appearances in these magazines, right? They were yeah. kind of like, they were little, little tri trial runs to see if they got hot, and then, you know, eventually they would get hot. So, Savage Tales, number one, first appearance of Your yeah. Man Thing. Man and thing an already right fucking there. cover at that, too. Yeah, yeah, really cool cover. And But what happened was, it really dug it. And you know how um, Stan has his Stan soapbox and stuff like that? A lot of people wrote in and said how they really liked it. So then that gave Roy the um, premise to talk to Conway and really the first appearance of Man Thing on the cover was uh, Adventures into Fear number 10. That's and your next that spec is, book guys. Yeah that's another spec book that you want to might want to look at and then we all know um, that Strange Tales that first issue was um, oh my god Strange Tales Adventures uh, where was it Swamp Thing I wrote it down. Yeah, uh, so veteran, Ventures into Fear is yeah. also known as the Man Thing run that introduced Howard the Duck, um, uh, kind of the opposite. His first comic book appearance because Howard the Duck also appeared in a magazine. But the those are the, that's why the Man Thing is interesting. You got Savage Tales number one. You got uh, Adventures into Fear, which is his first solo series, right? And then he eventually there's a couple of printings also or volumes of Man Thing number one. I think all of them are great because there's a Man Thing I came out in 1979. I mm -hmm. believe a man thing that came out in 1974. So there was a couple of volumes. So Adventures yeah. into Fear, number 10, his first solo, obviously Savage, number one. And Justin, what, what are we talking about as far as price ranges and movement on any of these? What do you think? We'll give an idea of what the collectors can expect to pay if they're looking for these books right now. So I was going after GPA and also just some eBay prices. So current GPA on a uh, Savage Tales, number one, 9.4, you're looking at about $790. Oof. Uh, <clears throat> Dropping down to an 8.0 gives you about $395. And right now, actually, there are two on eBay, CGC 9.2s. There is one at around $200. There's another one for around $112. And both really? of those end the next couple Damn of days. Justin, so, both of those are on my watch list. But <laughs> <laughs> that just goes to show you, I would have bought it before I dropped the news. Hey, like man, we got, we're got we fair and balanced. We'll, we yeah, will give you the information. We tell everybody about everything. So. <laughs> so just so you guys know, i just talking to the Black Knight right now, and um, he is part of that cabal. So um, when I Illuminati. I, I want to call when, the Illuminati. Yeah, so when I told it's you fitting. there's a secret cabal of uh, collectors that – get information well he's the one that disseminates that information to, so there's private there's like you know how we all have our little fi private facebook chats uh you know group chats and everything they have one that's locked down and he's the part of the cabal that spreads it and gives it and other collectors buy it and the, here's the interesting thing is you won't hear about this information going out to people um the black knight is he has got his own money he's not in it for the money or else he'd have his own you know youtube channel or whatever and now i mean it's it's to the point now there, there's scoopers out there that profit from this like you know umberto gonzalez from heroic hollywood who's such a trash site now by the way they hired me to be an intern i told him no thanks i'm gonna try to do my own thing with lords and Longbox. that's just a little trivia for you guys but there's tons of them you know m uh, cosmic book news which is just a trash website that is basically the one that said you know brie larson sucks and all this all these guys are claimed to be scoopers so now i'm just trying to give you the information that you know the scoopers are the real guys that know the inside stuff are saying you know a lot of these scoopers aren't giving you the right information so i just want to pass that on there so 
Uh, in short, let's wrap it up with Man Thing. Savage Tales number one, Adventure yep. in the Fear number ten, Man Thing one, and Man Thing one. Uh, I right. believe there was a more modern run too. Uh, so you know, yeah. be careful. A lot of time Marvel likes playing with these, and like I posted on Instagram a couple days ago for um, a multiple comic Monday about. Uh, the Midnight Suns, Spirits of Vengeance, all those titles, man. I think those are the those those, those team books are gonna get. Uh, and speaking of the supernatural shows, what's the second thing up here? We got a little speculation yeah, as far as so villain spec. As you know, there's gonna be a Ghost Rider TV series that Marvel is doing, and there's some speculation on some of the um, characters that might be in the show. The our man TBK, the Black Knight. Uh, gave me a nice little nugget about the uh, uh, how far along Ghost Rider TV series is and the villains that are going to appear in it. Um, this th these are very interesting uh, villains because one of them is he's a little bit all over the place. Um, uh, the, the featured villains are going to be in Ghost Rider the Hulu show are going to be Scarecrow. Um, there's a couple of different iterations of Scarecrow. I have a first appearance of it, but this ver the there's a version of Scarecrow that eventually got changed his name to Straw Man, and, and that was right around the Bronze Age. There's an older uh, Scarecrow that appeared way back in the Tales of Suspense number 51. Uh, the other villain that's going to be it is, is someone who's probably was a major player in the comics probably, what, around three or four years ago is the Orb. Um, if you remember the uh, what was that called the uh, the first sin original sin what was that uh, the the, the crossover sin. event yeah original. the original sin crossover event where I found out that you know Nick Fury was doing all this stuff and watching stuff and the guy remember Thor found out he was unworthy the orb is that dude that has a big eye as a head that's basically him and so I can see that happen at first if you were like. Or never heard of him, but then I remember that was part of the uh, um, the original Sin storyline where Thor lost his worthiness, where Uatu was killed. Remember that Uatu, the Watcher, was killed. Uh, the Winter Soldier ended up being, and Nick Fury ended up just like I remember they just stuck him on the moon, and he was going to be a Watcher. But Otto, what are some of the first appearances of these two characters that people should look out for? Of the Orb. What are we? Uh, sorry, guys, I think we were just paying attention yeah, to something and, else. Uh, the Scarecrow. The Scarecrow. Man, we set this um, up all week too. We did, we did, we did, we did. Somebody's got to help me out with this. So the, first the Ghost Rider. I put the graphic up. It's been up yeah. since we've been talking about this. The yeah, first okay. two are Ghost Rider Volume Six, Number Twenty Six. Yeah, Orb's first appearance is Ghost Rider um, uh, Volume Six. Watch one out, is a variant, that. and one yeah. is the normal cover. Yeah. And so, then we have the Tales of Suspense Fifty One is the first appearance of Scarecrow. I think that's a cool book because anytime you can go that far back into a sale, Tales of Suspense book to pick up uh, just an obscure vil uh, character, I think that's great. Uh, that Orb Ghost Rider Volume 6, it's harder than you think to find. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that. <laughs> the variant yeah. cover is the inside cover. I would say he probably got a little bump um, when the original Sin uh, crossover event happened in Marvel, mm -hmm. right? You know, people are like, hey, let me go find out what this character is about because I always thought he was kind of goofy, a dude with like a big eyeball. Right, right. right. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Justin, what what are we looking at on prices? I got to think the orb isn't got much at all. Yeah, the orb was you know you can get anywhere between five to, to twenty to twenty dollars if you get like a, a lot. But I mean, so far as tales of suspense, that fifty one. I mean, that's an old book. I mean, you're looking at an old school Iron Man as well. You know, nine point fours uh, GPA was like fifteen sixty, and then eight point five actually drops it down to about four hundred and seventy five dollars. But on eBay right now, there is a couple of VFs for around ninety bucks. So if you are specking. It's not bad for yeah. under $100 for an old school book like that. Yeah, I think that Tales of Suspense book is pretty cool. And I think the orb is not done in the Marvel comics. You know, Obviously, Scarecrow, I don't know what I think he comes out every year during Halloween, and that's about it. Um, you know what I mean? So um, let's talk about some DC news well, yeah. and perhaps some a, bad news. If you're a DC Universe fan, you're not going to like this news. Um, some information came out recently. Yeah, and, and this uh, is actually coming from uh, the Black Knight himself, um, talking to anonymous employees over at DC Warner Brothers that the DC streaming service is on the verge of collapse. And uh, I think we talked about this on one of our prior shows uh, with Warner Brothers streaming app coming up. You got the uh, the DC Universe streaming app. Then you have the CWC. Everybody forgets about the CWC. That's another CW right. DC kind of you know thing. 
Um, and according to it, it's what we think it's going to happen. It's going to kind of all fold into the Warner Brothers app. So um, they're going to see what shows they want to continue with. So, you know, Swamp Thing is obviously coming out now. And I would assume see... Titans would continue. I would assume. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, I'd be devastated um, if we did two uh, seasons to a Titans. Uh, what's the other one? Doom Patrol. I assume that will continue. Yeah, um, still, so Star I, Girl. Star Girl's still going to come out. Harley it's just, working. I think once Marvel came out and said, hey, uh, D- Disney came out and said, hey, man, you can do all the Marvel, Disney, Pixar, and everything for seven ninety nine a month. And then, you know, DC was like, well, ours is six ninety nine, and we have four shows on there. But, you know, you can watch Batman 66 all day long. Right. You know, it, it makes sense business-wise to fold it into Warner Brothers, and then you can offer a bigger, bigger platform. And us as a consumer, it makes more sense as well, right? No, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fan of it. You know, it's interesting to see about the swamp thing, though, and the way they're going to go with it. Um, so you have to go, you have to figure it out. I mean, swamp thing. If you guys don't remember, we're going to talk about this when Tim and I are old. So we remember when the movie came out in 1981, 82, with, 82 with uh, Adriana Barbeau. Oh I'm yeah, saying, we really liked her. She had some great eyes. She's still and, in the spank uh, bank. <laughs> you still will see it. The movie was for 1982. You know, it was it definitely is dated but it was what you had for swamp thing and west craven actually directed that you guys wow mm-hmm. that's so, amazing i did not know it, that yeah west craven directed it um so that was pretty neat and that was considered a horror movie at the time and right now if you watched it it would be like i don't know like i don't know i wouldn't even get would even put it it would in be that. on a uhf channel at like two in the afternoon if there's yes, such a exactly, thing as a uhf you know? channel anymore right. but you know, the only way they can they they need to build more content, and we're as we're giving you more news about what's coming on to Hulu and Disney Plus, it's like man, they need they really need to step up. And then later on, yes, we will talk about the Batman casting news uh, because I actually have some inside information about that as well. But um, speaking of really crappy movies, into something that's coming, and this is uh, breaking uh, inside information we're finally getting that I think will be announced at San Diego Comic Con. Hit us with the I mean, if you've been watching the Lords of the Long Box, I've been talking about Phase 4 for how long and what they would do at San Diego Comic-Con, Hall H, drop that Fantastic Four logo. Uh, our man, the Black Knight, is telling us that, indeed, Peyton Reed, uh, writer-director of Ant-Man, is in talks to write and direct the Fantastic Four reboot from Marvel Studios. And here's what's... A lot of people don't know if you're just speculating that Peyton Reed, because I remember a few months ago, Peyton Reed said, you know, I'd love to direct a Fantastic Four film. And the articles were like, it's one of those articles you see on clickbait sites where like somebody says, I would love to play this character. Of course you would. Everybody wants to play. That right, character. Who but Peyton Reed has got deep connections already in the MCU. Ant-Man is probably going to come to an end maybe after the second film, maybe the third film. They've been fun films. You know, they've been making OK money. But Fantastic Four, that's the gem of the freaking marvel cinematic universe and here's the interesting thing the new Mar- ff franchise will borrow heavily from uh, three different runs of course the stanley jack kirby run so you think of right you know all the characters that came uh, the galactic silver surfer but also right. and i've always talked about this a john byrne run that started on oh, fantastic right. four 232 up to 282 would introduce you to storylines like uh, the trial of reed richards the second coming galactus frankie ray becomes a herald and sacrifices herself a nihilist and the negative zone those major stories and the biggest one of that one is the trial of reed richards right he put on he was put on trial for basically allowing galactus to live when he could have killed him and also right. We just talked about this man last week and his epic storyline. Yeah. They will also be pulling from the Jonathan Hickman run of Fantastic Four, which I also love, which also brought about, I believe, the death of Johnny Fl- uh, Johnny uh, Storm, the Human Torch. By the way, one of the best death scenes in comics of all time. And Jonathan Hickman's run on Fantastic Four was truly cosmic. Well, and I just over- bought the trade, so I'm going to be reading that one. Oh, nice. Like, don't forget to read it twice because it's Jonathan Hickman. Yeah, so, right. Three yeah, times. Three, three times. times. I don't know, you know if you what, have anything on this, Otto, but it's kind of obvious what the books are to get. Well, why don't you see what you got right. for us since you, well, no, you fell on your books, face on Ghost Rider 6 I really Scarecrow. Did, I, I, 100% I'm sorry about that. I, I was so <laughs> engrossed. In I had to get to Swamp. I wanted to talk about Swamp Thing, and I just, you know, that was that, that was that definitely laid a goose egg. But we have talked about this many times before, that the Fantastic Four Bronze Age is just ripe for the pickings as far as first appearances of characters. Now, I know we have also seen the prices skyrocket skyrocket in FF48 and 49, but there are other books that you can get. You know, um, 
well, obviously the first appearance of Black Panther is very pricey right now, but let's talk about other characters. Let's talk about maybe the first appearance of Gorgon. That was in the early FF movies, in the FF books. We also have the Molecule Man, who would be a very good um, villain. We also have, you know, Annihilus. Submariner. Annihilus. Submariner, right, who Neymar, that was big FF news. FF number four. That, you know? Right, absolutely. That would be huge news, too. That book is getting harder and harder to find, uh, Fantastic Four, and it's getting very pricey, too. So be careful about that. You also have great storylines from, you know, the Frightful Four and Medusa, first appearances like that. You also have Silver Surfer. Then when you get later on into the other books, you have all the Heralds. You have um, Silver Surfer. Well, first appearance of Fire Lord, that was in a Thor uh, comics, but remember that. You have the first appearance of Terok, Terex. FF211. Uh, FF211. Terex the that Tamer, now. FF211. Terex yep. Tamer, man. He destroyed the Baxter Builder with one swoop of that blade. So, you know, those are books that you should be looking after. So that run is very interesting. And going back to the trial of Reed Richards, that would be a great trilogy movie. You know, if they somehow brought that in and did that over three movies over, you know, maybe a six to seven hour period, that would be really, really interesting because you could bring Galactus into it and then you could put him on trial. And that was when John Byrne was actually writing and drawing yeah. that story at the same time. The so, John Byrne run starts know. at issue 232, one of my favorite all time, top five runs of all yeah. time. Uh, also, Frankie Ray as the her first Herald, I believe is FF 244 or 245. Um, you also have when was Gladiator's first appearance? I'm trying to remember. Um, Gladiator, the Sherryar. Um, yeah, um, he was the first appearance was in an X Men book. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and also but that, that was two fifty. Yeah. You know, that was when he. That was a great battle between uh, Thing and him, and the buildings crumbled. That was just another. And the Scrolls were involved in that book too. So don't forget that because they yeah. um, cloned up as the X Men. So, so that the, was I mean, the run. FF history is just rife with just first appearances, storylines. And then if you think about the Hickman run, that's basically where they bring part of Annihilus and also the death of Johnny Storm. So right around issues like 600, but there's tons of variants around there too. Justin, what are we looking about? Uh, some of the bigger books or some of the smaller books price wise or that movement on them? I mean, really, anything between FF 1 through 10, I mean, those are almost becoming untouchable books because of all the different first appearances, just like any other, uh, you know, X-Men, Spider-Man, all of them, they have those first appearances. So like you said, I mean, you got Namor in there, you get the Doom, uh, you got Watchers in there, Great Ghost. So, right. I mean, there's Absolutely. a lot of stuff. So anything in there is, I mean, I have grades all over the place, but you're looking at least minimum, like almost $1,000, even on like VD pluses and fine. So... It's tough to get a book, and uh, you know now's the time because they, even though yeah, Disney has it, they said they're coming at some point, but now's the time to pick up these first appearances because the FF books are only getting older mm -hmm. and older. Uh, guys, Good I point. I got breaking information from our man, the Black Knight. Um, a lot of Jonathan Hickman is going to be used for Phase Four and Five. Uh, I'm not surprised. I mean, more details coming are... uh, later this week, but literally, I'm uh, I'm talking with him right now he's watching show he said a lot of hickman is going to be in phase four and five if you've been paying attention hickman did a lot of avenger stuff and a lot of fantastic four stuff basically hickman did a lot of cosmic stuff yeah. if you think about where phase four and five are going with the cosmic universe hickman is your man of course hickman so, is also rebooting x-men right now too right so that would bring in you know that annihilus book so gary i know you're watching this very gary can you save some of those books for everybody else <laughs> I mean, the guys like <laughs> Like 10 copies. I mean, save some yeah. for other people, for God's sake. Man. Gary, Gary, <laughs> pay attention to one. Yeah. All right, one. Ryan, uh, well, what's next? Sp speaking of books to look out for, it sounds like Hercules is set to make his uh, debut in the MCU in That's four, right. number four. So there will be a uh, Thor sequel, Thor 4, and uh, they're going to have to change that title because Thor 4 does not roll off the tongue. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it's been speculated already. People have been saying it's got to be Hercules. Well, I'm I'm getting a confirmation from our our man, the Black Knight, that Thor Hercules will be in Thor four, um, and it's it's they need to bring in more of these powerful characters. Um, and the Hercules has been around. I just read the run of Avengers where Hercules is is prominent in it, where they killed out Olympus. Help me out. What was the name of the uh, Avengers? Long Road Home, uh, I believe, was the run. Uh, and Hercules no plays a... Yeah, no no, Her yeah, great run by the uh, Maxi series, by the way. Avengers No Road Home. Uh, Hercules is prominently set in that book, and they kind of rebooted his persona. He's always been kind of this goofy kind of character, but now he's they seem to make him a bit more serious. And he got a new costume at the end of it. 
So no more sitting around in his underwear or whatever the hell he was with his weird mace. Loin cloth. Uh, yeah, with that palette. Otto, for those yeah. who don't know, what's his what's his history and what's his first appearance? Well, you want to get uh, Journey into Mystery Annual Number 1. You want to get that. That's his first appearance. That's a very iconic cover with both of them going at it. And, you know, Hercules has gone through many different phases. And I think for the Asgardians in his storyline, he was kind of like the second fiddle to Thor. And he was always kind of like, I want to say the stepchild, because you know, we're not talking they like that. They are the Olympians. Just... They, they pick the Asgardians as, the, you know, Odin's the all-father and Zeus. Zeus was always considered in a pantheon of gods of Marvel comics, but he was never yeah. as powerful as Odin, the all-father. Right, right. So definitely the um, the backstory is is the, the two of them just don't get along, and they just have to figure it out, and they've got to get it. But that is a great cover right there. That's a square-bound book, you guys, so that's going to be hard to find in higher grades. Um, but that's just a fantastic cover done by, you know, Jack Kirby. And what's interesting, too, is, is you know, during the 80s, late 70s and early 80s, when I was really buying it, Thur Hercules had his own little miniseries. He had, like, one of those one through four miniseries. He was in the Avengers. He was, like, their strong man. So it's interesting who's going to play Isn't Hercules. is he part of, like, the Champions or something like that? He was. Uh, that was a yeah. great, great weird Absolutely. little book, man. Hercules, right. I believe it was Hercules, Angel, yep. um, no, it wasn't Black, Black Widow. Black Widow, yeah. Yeah. God, the champion was a good story. I think that was yeah. George Perez. They even had that, that, uh, what was that when uh, it, it was Incredible Hulk and then it became Incredible Hercules, right? Yeah. The Marvel yeah. run? Well, That's... remember, he was paired up with Amadeus Cho for a while. Yeah. And then Amadeus Cho kind of went on. He got so popular, became the Hulk, and now he's in the champions, kind of full circle, right? But what are we looking at, Justin, as far as prices on uh, these Hercules books? Uh, for a Jim Annual number one, I mean, this this book is tough to find. Yeah. 9.0 .0, 9 last sale this year was for $1,280. Good I lord, yeah. Uh, an 8.5 went for 576. And this See, that's is the kind of grade I would be at that book for. So, check this out an 8.5 went for 576, but an 8.0 went for $840. Really. So that, that's that's some of those weird things on GPA where somebody hard. overpays for something because they wanted it so bad, right? If they were to right. wait. So, you know, like I always, but you know what? I like I always say, man, the, if you're going to get a, a hero book, it's always a great investment. You know what I mean? Because they, especially if they're going to be in the movies, right? If you spec on TV shows, be careful. It can be a quick flip. But, you know, the long haul, the long game, the long investment is heroes in the, the movies, especially the big two, DC and Marvel, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, the exception to that, would be Umbrella Academy and and Netflix because that show was so awesome that those books are are flying off the shelves or you know, you know literal figuratively I don't think they're shelves anymore but <laughs> you know what I Rex. mean. Uh, but that Hercules is pretty big man. It'd be so interesting to see who they cast for because you got to think it's got to be a big kind of buff dude, right? I meant you know not like The Rock because The Rock's playing Namor. But anyway, what's next, Ryan? Well, for all of you Thunderbolt fans. We may have some bad news. Yeah. Um, our man has told us that, you know, there's been a long running rumor that uh, the Thunderbolts film is actually uh, going to happen and has been in development. But um, according to several inside sources, the rumor of Thunderbolts film is actually a project that has been on the back burner at Marvel TV, not even the and not even on the MCU. Uh, Feige and Disney are not excited about releasing villain movies, especially with so many Fox characters now, at, on, you know, at their whim that they can use. So, you know, I mean, I always thought about a Thunderbolts. Well, how are they going to make that? You know, it, you know, it's kind of interesting. And, you know, you got Suicide Squad, but that's kind of its own niche where Thunderbolts you kind of part of the reading was it was, it was finally fi figuring out who was whom and everything. And now they, I would think maybe a Thunderbolts film could have worked um, way back when, when Marvel didn't have all the Fox, but now that they have this giant sandbox, you know what I mean? That's a lot. But mm. yeah, for those who don't know, Otto, what are the Thunderbolts first appearance? I didn't do my homework on this. You guys, <laughs> yeah, I know it's a Hulk book. It's a Hulk no, book. Got it yeah. Right. It's like Hulk, yeah, uh, I just picked it up. And I can't remember um, the number. Anybody in the chat? Yeah, this is comedy tonight, you guys. Three. Holy cow. No, just we give you we give you one job, Otto. One job. I know I had one job. I know. Um, so Thunderbolts first appearance, Incredible Hulk 449. Uh, and then of course Thunderbolts number one came out. Uh, and it was a great read. Kurt Busiek actually killed it. If you guys don't know, remember who Kurt Busiek is. He was a great superhero comic book writer. Uh, and when I say that is he really liked doing superhero books, not like dark, gritty street. But he was very if you remember his run in Astro City, Kurt Busiek, uh, I don't even know what he does now. Does Kurt Busiek even write for the big two anymore? I but, know, I haven't seen but Kurt Busiek is the one that drove the Thunderbolts and made it what it was when it first came out. I mean, they were a 
motley crew of characters. I mean, there was, uh, let me see, Baron Zemo, Baron Helmet Zemo was like the main guy. Uh, there were some other weird characters like uh, Songbird. You remember her? No, you don't. Uh, no. Bullseye at one point. Uh, Penance. Radioactive Man. Um, Radioactive. Yeah. Um, and then there was another iteration. Uh, Black Widow, Ghost, Paladin, Headsman, Ant-Man, Grizzly. And they were basically trying to mimic uh, superheroes characters. When you lifted up the, the hood, though, they were totally different characters. So um, be careful speculating on Thunderbolts. That's all we're saying. It may be something that never happens, and it, or if it does happen, it's something that they're put on the back burner and it's going to come to Marvel TV. I mean, it may even go on ABC. I mean, that's you know what I'm saying. That's how far back it's gone. Um, and so, be careful. I know a lot of people have been talking about it, and you know, it's on a lot of top ten lists. Thor for you know the. Um, uh, shit, I always forgot about it. Hulk three forty four. Yeah, <laughs> but I know there's a lot. Of, it's on a lot of top ten lists of of uh, Hulk four four nine. But just be careful. Just know that it's on development, on way in the back burner though. Uh, you know, I think once Disney got Fox, it changed a lot of yeah. plans that they I had. I mean, look, you have X Men and Fantastic Four now. Well, you have Deadpool, you have Cable, you got right. X-Force, you have everything. Right, you know, right. I mean, do we really need a Thunderbolts? I right. mean, I would say no. in Flaggy We Trust, you know, but, you know, why not do – now? why not see what they have going on in these other places? I just think, uh, uh, you know, if you've been paying attention to what the MCU has been doing for the last 10 years, you've been listening to what we've been saying, what does Marvel do with their villains? They're one and done except for Thanos because he we needed that Thanos storyline. The next phases, there will be another big baddie as well. But, you know, all the little wayside baddies, you know, a couple of films and they're done. Right. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I will tell you in the upcoming weeks who that baddie is going to be. Uh, 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 BK has told me to hold tight on it right now. But let's just say he's in the Captain America mythos and we'll leave it at that. But let's move on to That's something great. else that uh, our man was able to tell us. And this has nothing to do with DC. Yeah. Walmart. And this is actually very, very interesting. I, I didn't even know. Really put Otto and Justin to the test right now. But I did my Otto homework on this. So I am ready to go on this, you guys. I am ready for this one. So, right. so apparently, and I did, this is news to me. Paramount once in, last the, week, actually. Yeah. once in the comic book news, uh, comic book movie game. So they acquired rights to Atlas comics. And it looks like yeah. we're going to get, three upcoming projects that's right last week it was announced that uh, paramount basically bought the entire library of atlas comics and if you don't know what atlas comics are don't feel bad because a lot of people don't but they all right. have the entire library now and paramount studios wants to get into the business of a building a cinematic universe and our man has told us about what the actual first three films are going to be what are those Otto? uh you're going to get into the uh vampire movie you're also I well I want to reverse this though. I want to talk about the history of Atlas. Sure. Um, because that Well, let me tell you what they are and then Brian. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry about the that. first three comics that are being developed in the movies are Planet of the Vampires, Grim Ghost, and Iron Jaw. So yeah, if you have those in your long boxes, then congratulations, because you may be one of the few people that do. <laughs> but yeah. well, give us the history. You'd be surprised so, in the history of this. There's been some pretty well-known creators that have been part of Atlas Comics. Yeah. So Atlas Comics is actually um, was started by our boy Martin Goodman, who was the founder yeah. of Marvel Comics. So there is a lot of back history to this. And when you go back into the Golden Age titles of these books, there's like the romance stories, the war stories, the horror stories. So they weren't like superhero-based stories, but they were more readers. <laughs> Then you got into the 60s um, when Atlas was then sold and then, you know, um, Atlas became Marvel and they moved over. But you've got into other stories where actually um, Jack Kirby was very, very involved in that. And there's a book called Strange Worlds and it's got like this creature and this was a Kirby cover and um, Steve Ditko actually worked for them. So a lot of Marvel creators actually worked for them. And other than titles like this and then they kind of went through it. And these were books that you really didn't care for because they weren't superhero books. They were just obscure characters. You've got names like Sons of Dragon, um, Sons of Dracula. You've got Iron Jaw, Wolf, W-U-L-F. -W 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 I'm sure you guys have seen that one. And, of you know, course, Planet yeah. Of that's it, man. <laughs> of course. Planet of the Vampires and stuff like that. So these books are actually out there, and it's just a great library that people really don't 
know or care about at the time because it wasn't hip. And now with Hollywood starving with all their writers and, you know, stories that need to be made and comic books, reading pre-made stories, they have this stuff. So this is a good move. And, you know. Yeah, Paramount it, wants to get in the game. I mean, if you think about it, uh, Mark Miller and, and his Mark Miller universe snatched up by Netflix, not only making shows, but they actually own the publishing rights to the net, to Mark Millar's comic books. I mean, Netflix got in the publishing game. They went exactly the opposite way. They started with films and shows, and then now they're publishing comic books. So go figure. But I'd be curious to see, I mean, if there's any movement on these books since, because the news was actually announced last week that Paramount bought Atlas. But now we know what the three first properties are going to be. What are we looking at, Justin? Is there any movement? Can you even find these books for sale right now? <laughs> Actually, yes, I can. Uh, so let's say look at the first one. Uh, Planet of Vampire is number one. All these books are really good because they only went three issues. So Planet of Vampire is number one. Last one for 9.4, which is actually two weeks ago, went for $85. Right. Simple money. Uh, you're looking simple, at but right, right, like simple. Um, I mean, that's like that's easy. That's a like jump change for some of these, you know, for, compared to a Silver Age book. Uh, yeah. You got Grim Ghost number one. Grim Ghost number one went for a nine point six. Went for eighty nine dollars. They great investments. Great uh, little and specs. That, and the last one was Iron Jaw number one. Yeah. Uh, Iron Jaw number one nine point six went for seventy nine dollars. And I did find a nine point eight went for one forty five. And I will tell you, there is a Iron Jaw 9.0 on eBay with two days left at $43. So, Ooh, all right. There you go. I met, you know, what you should start looking at is people who have deals or contracts with Paramount Studios that people have been directing, the actors, because a lot of times they'll, they'll pick and choose from their own studios, right? That's why it gives you more credence to the our, our story that we broke about The Rock playing Namor. The Rock is already part of the Disney universe. He's gonna he's doing that Disney film uh with the uh Moana. what is that? That the adventure ride? Well he did Moana as well, but if you think what is that yeah, Disney ride, ride, the uh, ride through the Caribbean or whatever, that boat yeah, ride? Yeah, he's making a, a movie about that. Yeah. No, uh, whatever that Caribbean Jungle Cruise, Jungle Cruise movie. Yes, yeah, God. Right. Yeah, oh, I right. never go on that ride. I only go on that ride when it's super hot because it goes through yeah, the right, shade. It cools you off. Yeah. But that's you know, I mean, man, you know. People talk about the bubble. There is no bubble. They're just saying, you know what? We've been making action movies the same way for years and years and years. Why not get some of these stories that nobody's heard of um, and see what's going on? And uh, speaking of stories nobody's heard of, what's going on with this Batman movie? Man, Jeez. I have no idea. No idea what's going on. It looks like there was a draft script, but it's still being written. Yeah, um, so and it doesn't look like anything has really been set in stone. The big news that dropped last week was that Robert Pattinson of Twilight fame uh, was going to be ta uh, picked to play Bruce Wayne and Batman. The internet's went wild with it, and there was a conflict. I think Variety reported, and then Deadline and uh, somebody else came out with a conflicting report to say it was Robert Pattinson was in the lead, but also the cat that plays the Beast in um fantastic or excuse me the x-men movies right. was yeah. also up for it i'm finding out that no it is truly pattinson our guy actually leaked this story last year uh, he said that pattinson was in the running and i, I think, remember you know, that news i remember that yep. news um and here's what uh some information that you probably don't know yet the first draft is still being written um, then there was another story that came on, and I asked him ex exactly when this article dropped about, you know, there could be a, an upwards of six, seven villains. They're talking about the Penguin and Catwoman. Well, the Penguin, good chance of being a villain. Catwoman, not so much because they want her to kind of do her own thing in the DCEU. And also, the, the Batman movie is not part of the DCEU. Matt Reeves, the director writer, fought hard to keep this kind of kind of in its own world. If you think about the Batman Nolan verse, think of it that way. Um, they're not really going to reference Wonder Woman or Aquaman because this happens. Think of this as a year one story. So Robert Pattinson will be playing a young Batman, a young Bruce Wayne. Uh, it's also hearing that it's going to be based loosely on Batman year one. And they want to take elements of Hush. And uh, what animated movie just is yeah, about to come out? Right. Hush. 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 And it wouldn't yeah. make sense to have him integrate into the Justice League universe because how yeah. would you explain it? You really, you wouldn't. Yeah. So, yeah. You wouldn't. so I but, mean, they're moving away from a DC EU uh, in, in Wonder Woman and in, Aqu in Wonder Woman 84. Obviously, it takes place 
in the 80s. So there's no reference at all to the DCU because it doesn't exist yet in the 80s, right? There's no right. Batman. There's no anybody. Maybe there – because if you think about Batman at his age now in 2018, a young Batman would probably put him right around the 90s. I'm right, thinking. Right. Right. You know, I, I here's something this- funny. Here's an extra caveat to it. In, one of, in the fir- some of the first scripts or storyboards, they flirted with the idea of making Penguin a female. Yeah, so I don't know who you would cast to get a short, you know what? Can round we, can woman. We, can we right. finally I don't think get a bar would do that? She had stomach surgery. Didn't can she? we finally what about, what's get her name? a new the Riddler? girl from uh, Bridesmaids? Melissa, what's her name? The comedian. Yeah, right, right, right. right? right. right. Yeah. I don't know, but you know what, you guys? I, I've said this before, though. We don't need another reboot of Batman. You know, it's they're just looking for something, and the DC universe has so many characters that you really wouldn't even like. Martian Manhunter should be there should be something going on with him. You know, an alien character coming here whose world gets destroyed. You know, there are other characters that Marvel, uh, DC should pull from, and that this just coming up is just they're just reaching for it and reaching for it, and it's just the world. And I'm sorry, guys, we just don't need another Batman reboot. Well, if you think about it, I mean. They kind of put themselves in a, a hole, so to say, because yeah. uh, Martian Manhunter and all these characters are they're just going on Berlani's world, right? You know, and Supergirl, he's been Martian mm-hmm. Manhunter has been there for a while. You got the Flash right. in there. Arrow's ending soon. I mean, I don't ever see Arrow coming to the big screen. I mean, you know, no. they, DC it has got this inferiority complex, even though their character came first, they don't want to follow up with an Arrow anything after Hawkeye has been on the big screen. And you right? know what I love the most about the whole thing? And don't get me wrong, I'm a DC fan. However, Marvel, in the last Spider-Man Far From Home trailer, dropped the multiverse. If yeah, anyone was going to do the fucking multiverse, excuse my language, it should have been <laughs> DC. Marvel beat them to it like they beat them yeah. to everything else. Like so, everything, right? I mean, it's, yeah. you know, at this point, it's almost laughable. Thank you for yeah, Aquaman. No, Thank yeah, you for... You know, that's all mysterious. Well, you know, I mean, DC can't. They need to create. But but they mentioned multiverse. They mentioned multiverse. multiverse. Yeah, you know, they they, in a way they're gonna have a multiverse because Batman is on his own world. You know, I mean, if you think about it, we don't. Supposedly, the Joker is also in that vein. Um, What I'm also hearing is that, and this is really what ups up you guys if this ever comes to light. Um, uh, The source was that. Um, the Joker in one of the drafts, and we don't know if it's being used yet, that uh, the Joker is actually the bastard son of Thomas Wayne. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Joker dies, and then Bruce Wayne uh, goes to avenge his brother and becomes the Batman. That would be the worst. You want to see angry fanboys? fanboys? Remake the Joker as Thomas Wayne's bastard son. That would be (laughs) awful. I mean, I like the idea of keeping just the Batman movies, and I had this conversation with you guys. I think Batman family and Gotham has so it's, many characters that you could have. Ex- you could just leave that universe as is. I mean, I mean you could do Batwoman. Right. You could do Robin. Hey, and shout you could out to do... the Bat. Hey, we didn't even talk about the Batwoman trailer. Look yeah, badass. Right. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. though it has three hundred thousand thumbs right. down yeah. because yeah, people are butthurt. Well, well, yeah. That's retarded. I mean, you even you could do villains. I mean, you got Harley. You could do yes. The- Right, you got Gotham City yes. Sirens. I mean, well, here's about. the thing, though. If you think about it, DC is doing heavily villains. They're doing Birds of Prey. They're doing Suicide Squad. So they're kind of, you know, they got their eggs in that basket. Where I they like it. Do... See, I like that, though. I yeah. Like the, and I, I, like I actually think Suicide Squad with James Gunn is going to be awesome. I think that's going to be one of the best films that they make. I think so. Mm-hmm. Still a little leery about Birds of Prey. I don't, I, you know, I never was a big Harley Quinn fan. I don't, you know, so... I don't know if you guys are into that stuff. I mean, like all the like Harley that, Quinn yeah. comic collectors yeah. I know are strictly doing it for the greed of the. I don't really the read Harley Quinn books, but you See, know the character. Exactly, cool. that's what I'm saying. They love that book, but you know nobody is going out and buying it. You know, maybe little girls are. I don't know if like collectors are, but everybody loves. The are you comic talking about the Amanda Connor? Yeah. Uh, run. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's a, it's a cutesy, bubbly book you know what i mean let's be honest it's terrible but i I think it's written for tweens i got every harley book from volume one two three and every all her little series the guy yeah (laughs) (laughs) that one is the gotham city sirens run because and gilly marsh they did amazing writing and drawing that that is the best run 26 issues i think so go out and get that it's in trade format that's where you want to see that's harley harley is the classic harley not this you know rollerblading roller derby right, right. she is now so i recommend that gotham city sirens 
pick it up. Right. You heard that. Breaking news for you, uh, since we were talking about Martian, Martian Manhunter, uh, the Martian Manhunter movie was was killed years ago by Dave Goyer and Zack Snyder. They hated him. Huh. Really? Huh. Yeah. Oh, fuck them. So, uh, you know, there you go. So we know what Zack Snyder think about Martian Manhunter. So that's probably why yeah. they got free reign to use him so heavily on uh, Supergirl, right? I mean, they right, were just, right. you know. Yeah. We're not using yeah. it here. You guys do whatever you want to see if it works. Yep, right. that was right. Yeah. Fun. My uh, Black Knight just said that's how Berlani got him because whatever DCU doesn't use first, DC proper, you know, DC Warner Brothers, then Berlani is free to use them. So mm -hmm. they were like, no, we're not doing anything with this. The only caveat is Flash, and we've seen where Flash is going. Right. Um, and Berlani is, you know, doing his thing, man. He's doing, you know, Batwoman. He continues hey, to go. Man. So kill it on TV, kill it on TV. But getting yeah. back to movies, it looks like we might have another collaboration between Sony and Marvel Studios. Oh, yeah, I kind of skipped that. Yeah. Um, right. So our man is telling us that uh, Sony wants to collaborate with Marvel Studios on an Into the Spider-Verse live-action movie, maybe even a trilogy with a different, more comet-accurate Venom. And, you know, we've always said this, that eventually Sony's going to run out of stuff to do. Uh, thank God they killed it with uh, Into the Spider Verse because that was freaking fantastic. And, fantastic. and like Ryan alluded to earlier, it opened up the possibilities of not only multiple Spider Man but multiple Spider Verses. We've seen Spider Man Far From Home with Mysterio, wink, wink, dropping the 833 universe that is the Captain Marvel core that opens up yet another thing that they can do so i think you know sony's going to want to collaborate more with marvel studios now hey let's mix and match and i think it was like three or four years ago when they first talked about how um the marvel studios and the sony studios agreement was working that marvel says okay sony you pay for all the licensing marketing everything distributing of the movie we got creative license meaning we are going to be writing directing casting these actors and let us tell the story we don't want you fucking up peter parker that's our guy right, right. if we're not going to get all of them at least let us tell us a story tom holland killed it so now there's getting a little you know i wouldn't say greedy but probably saying hey man look at this venom to mixed reviews i enjoyed it i thought it was kind it was of a good movie fun it was film. fun yeah. it was movie right but it killed it at the box office for what it cost to make. I think it was a hundred million. I think it did like six, seven hundred million. That's a seven-time multiplier. That's pretty darn good for a film that guarantees you a, a sequel. Hell, I mean, Shazam pulled in a three hundred sixty million. It only cost, and it cost a million dollars to make, and it's getting a sequel. Um, right. So, I mean, after a while, like we all sat there and go, like, okay, so Venom Two is going to be about Venom and Carnage. So then, where do you go? Right. I mean, you'd have to bring in Donny yeah. Case to tell you that crazy story of symbiotes all across the universe right, and right. things like that. And but, then, you know, after that, I mean, right. What else do you guys think? Sony has to collaborate. Right? If you think about all the stuff that kind of fell to the wayside, uh -huh. uh, yeah. we were going to get a uh, Silver Sable movie. That never happened. Black uh, Cat. Black Cat is yet to appear. I don't know why they don't do Sinister Six. I mean, I know we Sinister talk about Six, it right. all the time. Like, but yep. why the hell not? Why the hell not? Well, I, I think know. that's I, what they were leading to. Or I you know what? Had, do a comedy, yeah. The Superior Foes of Spider-Man. That book was hilarious. <laughs> okay. I love that shit. So right. do something well, like that. I think we know? got MODOK coming. I, I saw an interview recently with... Um, Patton Oswalt, who's going to be playing, he's actually writing uh, Modoc and replaying the character as well. And he and he was like, "Hey, don't I kind of look like Modoc?" And he's actually voicing him. And then the the writers on there is like, "Just use your regular voice." He goes, "What are you trying to say that I sound like a Modoc?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> for those who don't know, just Google a picture of Modoc. Google a picture of Patton Oswalt. It's hilarious. Go look for his interview. It was on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. It's pretty good. All right. Right. Um, let me. I'll just drop this next one, Ryan, since we're running short on time. Yeah, Don't man. want to step. On I think we've already comic. talked about it quite a bit. Well, here's the thing. I'm following up on the Neymar news that we dropped. That I dropped on Wednesday. If you haven't go check that out. Um, so they, the Rock and 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 Kevin Feige supposedly had dinner, uh, and they basically their sides have already agreed that they want to do this Neymar film. Um, there's going to be an official meeting where the rocks are going to meet with Kevin Feige and they're going to talk about salary and scheduling for Neymar. Neymar will be introduced in black Panther too. And we'll probably not have a big role because if you remember, we, I talked about, it's going to be based on Atlantis attacks. Atlantis attacks featured Atuma as the main protagonist. Atuma yeah. was at that point in Atlantis attacks was the ruler of Atlantis. So you can see the rock coming in, but the rock, man, the dude is coming out in like two movies a year, right? So the rock schedule, they're going to figure it out where he can have a nice small role. And it's similar to black Panther 
in Civil War, right? Black Panther was in there, but he wasn't, you know, he was in there five minutes mm -hmm, at a time, mm -hmm. 15 minutes at a time, 20 minutes at a time. I expect that maybe a little bit less. And this is the Marvel way. Do the cameo in a film first yeah. and then give him his own solo film. Right. Um, I, I I see him coming in like the end of the movie. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you get like the last 10 minutes of him or something like that. So yeah. But and any announcement if that's going to be made, because I'm being told the rock is meeting with Kevin Feige this week. Um, but even if they do come to an agreement, unless the rock can't keep his mouth shut, this would be uh, the biggest announcement on at Hall H to San Diego comic-con. Can you imagine Huge. them Huge. introducing the cast of black Panther two and then bringing the rock on the stage? That would right. be incredible. Oh, please blow up. I mean, yeah. Um, and for those who want to speculate on anything, you know, all the Namor, you know, FF4, first appearance of Namor, Submariner number one, Atuma, which we didn't bring up earlier as all the fan first appearance, Fantastic Four number 33. That's another great book to get. So if you want to speculate on villains, Atuma, the blue Atlantean is in a FF number 33. So uh, that's, you know, I hope you guys all been taking notes or just watching on the replay, but that's a lot of information to take in a lot of great books out there to go and buy. If you already have everything, go buy it. If you don't, if you already have a copy, buy a couple of copies, right? Hmm. Stimulate the market. Want. Stimulate. Look at that. That's a great cover right there. That's very sharp. But you wonder how they're going to it, – it's almost like you know they're throwing it out there, going to see if it works, and then it is. Uh, Tim, real quick, how much did The Rock want to do Black Adam? That's – let me bring that up because uh, as when I talked about The Rock hap, uh, coming on to do Namor and he really wants to do it is partly also because – of the negotiations for Black Adam are not going the way he wants it to be. Right. Uh, it's a shame. Shazam it's a has shame. a very had a very modest budget, and you can tell, you know, there was some sketchy CGI here and there, but it was a fun film overall. Mm -hmm. But The Rock wants to go bombastic because The Rock already demands a pretty hefty salary mm -hmm. in Hollywood. The Rock reportedly wanted a two hundred dollar, two hundred million dollar budget for a Black Adam. He wants it to be bombastic, big, great special effects. And DC is just not committed to offer that type of money, especially when they saw the returns on what uh, Shazam did. Uh, they're, you know, they're a bit skeptical. They know Aquaman did well. They know Wonder Woman did well. But they're, they're, they, if they thought Shazam, people didn't know Shazam, they're really hesitant on people knowing who Black Adam is. Right. Right. Everybody, all 75 of you in the live chat right now, know who Black Adam is. But... <laughs> Do your girlfriend know who he is? They all know <laughs> right. who the Rock is, and they're they're kind of gambling. Like you know what? Do, if that's a girl who knows Black Adam, that's a keeper. Mary, yeah, right? right. <laughs> Put a ring on it. Uh, but but also, and the the flip side is this: is Marvel is just making money hand over fist, right? The uh, I think by the time they we end the show, I think Infinity uh, Endgame may have passed Avatar. It's on the way. I think it's at two point six million now. It's a it's yeah, it it's inevitable. I mean, it's it hasn't even been a month. Since it's released, it's, I'd be, I would love to see it hit three million billion, the first ever three billion dollar movie. That would be nuts. Um, but so all the money they're making, they can afford to say, all right, hey, take it, Rock, just give what right. we got. And right. Rock's got that box office power, right? I mean, he, he could do it. I mean, uh, you would think Warner Bros. would think the same thing that, man, the Rock has, you know. And as I talked about in the previous video, the Rock has the villain clause in his film in his contract. Even so if he kills it as Namor on the MCU side, he can go back to DC and do uh, a Black Adam film mm -hmm. because he's mm -hmm. playing a hero in one and a villain in the other. The same ah, as well, the, hey, the but Thanos, is the Namor Josh a villain though? Thanos and Cable is Namor a great villain? Negotiating right there. That's great negotiating. Yeah, but you know he wants to do. He wanted to do Black Adam, but he's real. I think, and also Jason Momoa and his Polynesian roots, and uh, the Rock and his Polynesian roots. He's saying, you know what? I saw my brother uh, Jason Momoa do it, Aquaman. I could do it from the water and kind of make it a more of a kind of island feel to it. For, even though it's Atlantis or uh, you know another Atlantis, but you know namor has been around for a while. Wow. It opens up a lot of room for storytelling with the Illuminati, Atlantis attacks, and all kinds of good stuff. That so. Fantastic Four, uh, right. number four, might be out of reach, but that Submariner 1 is still a yeah. good buy. It is. That FF4, actually, that FF4 book started jumping as soon as Marvel bought Fox. Yeah. Everybody started buying everything. Yeah. Uh, right. All right. So, uh, Right at the seven hour, uh, the one hour mark, the seven o'clock, one hour mark. Uh, so make sure after our show, a couple people at our friends at the Comic Corn Limited, man, they go live right after us. Uh, and uh, we'll be back next Wednesday, unless 
some really break big big news breaks i will pop in live and give you guys that information but uh any last words justin uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure everyone's wondering why I'm wearing a guinea pig. So I just want to give a shout out to my <laughs> my uh, my new tattoo I just got. Uh, shout Ooh. out to my com. Nice, sexy, is all glistening, glossy. Uh, uh, he got tattoo up in Rockaway. My boy Sean, he did this. So kind of see it, pretty dope. That's why I'm wearing a guinea yeah, today. I like so, how you flex yeah. a little bit there too. That was yeah. good. <laughs> so no jersey <laughs> tattoo, <laughs> lost jersey, guys. All right, Otto, any last words? Oh, Otto fucked up tonight. <laughs> so, you know, that's all I'm going to say. But no, crack the no the crack no, on uh, Friday night. You got to promote that for God's sake. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. So we do have a show coming up on Three Men in the Basement. It'll be this Friday night. Uh, we are getting ready for Terrificon. I got tons of books back from pressing. I'm going to go over the grades and what I think they are going to come back at, and we'll talk about that. We're also going to have a special guest on. That's going to be Discovery Bay. He's going to join us for about an nice. hour. Or he jump, jumps on, and you know, my boy Roger Levesque. We're going to see if Bernie 1869 is around and get ready because the three men in the basement, Lords of the Long Box birthday party is coming. It's right around the corner. Ooh. So we've got, we're talking about that and you yeah, know, CG. sum up to everything and right. uh, just enjoy the way everything's going. Thank I might actually get drunk that night. That's a good day. That's yeah. a good time. It's a birthday party. I don't drink much, but you know what? I might pop a few Why that not? night. Why not? Yeah. Why not? All right. Thank you, guys. And Ryan, any last words? As always, thanks for joining us. I really have a great time doing this. I hope you like the new format. We're trying to bring you as much good news as we can. Um, it, it seems to be some pretty great information. So I hope you enjoy, and we'll see you next week. That's right. So thank you all. Make sure you sub us up because we're going to be dropping as much of this content for as long as we can. Uh, our man is its dedicated to be giving us these uh, scoops exclusively through Lords and Longbox and cultivate that relationship. So he's a great guy. And I hope one day we can lift up the veil and he can show you the secondary veil underneath. <laughs> he's a mysterious, you know, man. maybe we can bring him on and do the, you know, the buzz out face and yeah. get the voice changer on him. I know, right? <laughs> Black out with the lines going across. Yeah, yeah, right. You know what? I will figure out how to do chest. that. I will figure out how to do that. Yeah, leave it up that'd to us great. and we'll black out his chest and you can totally oh, see his face. <laughs> I might happen uh, to be at a next show. Shout out to our man, David Yabara. He says, give me a shout out for my birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. That's right. We're here for all y'all. Thank you all. Make sure you thumbs us up. Make sure you give us a subscribe. And until next time, boys and girls, keep digging in the line. Oh. I'm going to have a haul video oh, coming you. up, man. I got like eight, Ew. nine slabs in the mail. I got some nice. raw books. And we got some Ooh. books that we spec'd about. So I got a comic haul coming soon. As soon as I'm waiting for two books, two books to come back from uh, WonderCon. Uh, my Young Avengers number one signed by Jim Chung. Ooh, yeah. Nice. I can't wait for that. But hey, thanks for all joining us. We will be back. Um, technical difficulty. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday for our live show. Until then, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace, Peace out.